Peace be with you, my dear sisters and brothers. We are in the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Today's Gospel reading, Mark 10, 35 to 45, asks and answers the question, How does one become great? There have been any number of celebrities over the years who have been considered great. Great football player, the great hockey player, the great one, the greatest baseball player, the great president, the great governor, the great actor, the great comedian, the great athletes. Now recently they talk about GOAT, an abbreviation for the greatest of all time. My dear sisters and brothers, but what does it mean to be great in God's eyes? That's the real question for us today. Today's gospel reading begins with two of Jesus' disciples greedy for greatness, as they understand it. James and John want to sit at Jesus' right hand and his left when he comes into his glory. They want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. But they clearly don't know what that means. Jesus offers them a path to greatness. But it is a very different path than the one they had in mind. He calls his disciples together and says to them, Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. My dear sisters and brothers, serving others, Jesus tells, is the path to true greatness. And Jesus offers his own life as a model of becoming great by serving. Jesus is not usually called the great one or the goat, the greatest of all time. But there can be no doubt that no single person has altered the course of world history more than Jesus. So Jesus is the great one. Jesus is the goat. Even non-Christian would agree to that. Jesus was great by almost any standard. But in this gospel reading, he does something quite radical. He redefines greatness for us all. He tells us that the path to true greatness lies in service. And he does not teach us this new path to greatness. He lives it. The Son of Man came not to be served but to serve. When you think about Jesus' life, it is marked over and over again, not by worldly greatness, but by humility. God's Son could uh, have been born anywhere, but he was born in the small town of Bethlehem. His first bed was a feeding manger for animals, because there was no room for him and his family in the inn. Jesus grew up in the small, unimportant town of Nazareth. Even one of his future disciples would ask, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus was not trained to be a religious leader. He was the son of a carpenter and was being trained to do that. He spent the first 30 years of his life unnoticed by anyone. Even when he began his public ministry, he went about the countryside of Israel, not seeking greatness, 
but serving and teaching and preaching and healing after 3 years he went to jerusalem not to be received as a great king but to be handed over to death he washed his disciples feet he allowed himself to be arrested tortured and humiliated on the cross he died a shameful death my dear sisters and brothers why did he do all of this because the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life for us Jesus life was always great in the eyes of his heavenly father but not so to the world the world has always had a different idea of what it means to be great and so did Jesus own disciple Jesus came not to be served but to serve and he invites us his followers to do the same to serve others to spend our lives looking for opportunity to give to others what Jesus has given to us this is so counter cultural isn't it when you look around our world today clearly the more popular choice is to be served most vacation destination does not try to lure us by inviting us to come and cook our own meal or clean our own rooms most restaurants don't try to attract customers by telling them that they can wash their own dishes in the eyes of the world the path to greatness clearly lies in being served in more and more ways we can be assured that we have made it when we spend our lives being served by others but even for people who achieve that goal they are often left with an emptiness in their lives being served by others many make us comfortable but it does not appear to make us happy all but switzerland is a famous lutheran missionary who knew this well he summed this up in a famous quote of his every person i know who has been truly happy has learned how to serve others so my dear sisters and brothers those who are truly happy are not spending their lives lying on a beach somewhere having people cater to their every whim those who are truly happy and who have found a meaningful life have learned how to serve others when you think about it many of our ministry opportunities at this church or at any church give us a chance to learn how to do this serving others makes god happy and you happy it is what jesus teaches and it is essential to being a faithful disciple but serving others also makes us happy because we discover that life is not all about us and our happiness and our comfort every one who has been truly happy has learned to serve others my dear sisters and brothers another well known saint who recognized this truth in a powerful way was mother teresa of calcutta she served the poorest of the poor in india truly living as a servant of all many people wanted to live as she lived so she began teaching a simple path here is mother teresa's uh, simple path the fruit of silence is prayer The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. Every one who has found happiness and true peace to put it in another way has learned to serve others. The peace that we all want and that our world hungers for cannot be measured by the number of servants we have but instead 
by the number of ways in which we have found to serve others. Martin Luther King Jr. used this gospel reading to show a different path to greatness. Here is what he said. Jesus gave us a new norm of greatness. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's the new definition of greatness. It means that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. So my dear sisters and brothers, you don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of uh, thermodynamic in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. And you can be that servant Jesus talks about today. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. And some of the greatest people in this world has ever seen had little more than that with a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. They found a way to serve others and devoted their lives to serving others. So my dear sisters and brothers, we can serve too. Following the example of Jesus, we can become great, the goat, by serving others, by looking for opportunity to give others what Jesus first gave us. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he invites us to do the same, to the glory of God. Amen. Amen.